healthy plant-based snacks and you clicked on the right video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make four of my favorite plant-based snacks that are nutrient dense and super easy to make. Like many of my recipes, they are so versatile, so you can use whatever you have on hand and the ingredients are very customizable for whatever flavors that you want. These recipes don't require any fancy ingredients, so you can probably make them with whatever you have at home already. If you've subscribed to my page and you watch my videos, thank you so much, I appreciate you. If you haven't already subscribed, be sure to do that below as well as hit the bell so you get notified for my future recipes, yoga classes, meditations, and nutrition videos. I release new videos every Thursday and Sunday. And without further ado, let's jump into my first healthy plant-based recipe, which is my fruit and yogurt bark. Right, the next thing I'm making is crunchy spicy chickpeas and these are super easy all you need is a can of chickpeas in your favorite spices and a couple tablespoons of oil either avocado or olive oil first thing I'm gonna do is rinse these chickpeas and take off the skins I noticed that my digestion with chickpeas is so much better when I take off the skins so I'm gonna do that it only takes about five or six minutes and then dry them completely toss them in a little bit of olive oil or avocado oil I love cooking with avocado oil because it has a higher smoke point so the lipids in the avocado oil actually stay more intact and are more nutritionally beneficial when you're cooking with high heat so roasting and sauteing is a little bit better with avocado oil than olive oil olive oil is better as like a finishing oil because the smoke point isn't as high so I'm gonna wash these um, dry them and I'll show you what they look like about you but that just looks hard to digest. Another trick for making things super crunchy is using the convection roast setting on your oven. So if you have that setting, you can put it on 350 or 375 convection roast. And what that does, it just blows the air a little bit more around the food, making it crisp. And also lay the chickpeas far enough apart from each other so that they have enough air to get crisp. Same with the kale chips. After we wash and dry it, we're going to lay it out flat, separate the leaves so that they're not touching, and that will help get them more crisp. Speaking of kale chips, I'm going to go wash and dry that and get to making my crunchy garlicky kale chips. If you've ever heard the phrase massaging kale, it's exactly what I'm doing right now and you can add some lemon juice and it helps to soften up the fibers of the kale and make it softer and easier to digest and also more enjoyable. You see how light this layer of oil is? So you only want to use a very light layer of oil or else the kale chips will end up soggy. And that's the biggest mistake a lot of people make when they're making kale chips. Also, the dino kale, the long dark green leaves that are like on one big stem that are a little bit thinner, that's called dino kale and that makes the best kale chips. But whatever kale you have is totally fine. I just got the pre-chopped and washed. Just make sure it's totally dry. Let's go 
check on how our chickpeas and our crunchy kale chips are doing in the oven. That's my timer. Do you wanna give them a little toss about 10 minutes through? And the kale chips will take a lot quicker to cook than the chickpeas. So about seven minutes, you wanna flip the kale chips. You can use a spatula or your hands just so the other side gets nice and crispy, but these are already doing great. But you see what I mean about the dino kale? So these are kind of small pieces of kale, so it's not as great for chips, but I'm just gonna put these in the oven for maybe two more minutes and then they'll be all set. These are so delicious over a salad or on the side of a dish or just a healthy, easy snack. And such a great way to introduce kale to kids or anyone who does doesn't think they like kale because it comes out super crunchy and delicious. Also just a warning about these, they do lose their crisp if you let them sit out. So store them in an airtight container or throw them back in the oven at high heat for a couple minutes to crisp them back up. Then last thing I'm gonna make is my protein granola or my pro granola. And I love this recipe. I use it all the time and top it on my smoothies or my yogurt bowls. I normally use egg whites in this recipe to bind the granola together, but all the recipes in this video are totally vegan. So I've recreated this recipe to be vegan and it is still delicious, protein rich, full of carbohydrates, fiber, and protein. offer high levels of folate, manganese, and plant-based protein, loaded with both soluble fiber and insoluble fiber, which helps stabilize blood sugar levels and promote the growth of healthy gut bacteria. Bake the granola at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 15 minutes, toss and flip the granola, bake for another 15 minutes until crisp. So in all honesty, I just pulled this granola out and I overcooked it a little bit, usually a little bit lighter in color than this, but it still tastes great. I love it for over smoothies or on top of yogurt bowl or just snacking in between meals. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed these snacks and if you make any of them, be sure to tag me on Instagram at zucchini.who. If you don't follow me, you should so you can stay updated on all different kinds of plant-based recipes that I post every week. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and leave me a comment so I know what kind of videos are the most helpful for you guys. And if you haven't already subscribed, be sure to do that and thank you so much for your support. I release new recipes and nutrition videos weekly. Thanks again for watching this video and I'll see you next time.